नाउ ए स्टेटमेंट बाय मिनिस्टर श्री एस जयशंकर जी मिस्टर चेयरमैन सर आई राइज टू मेक अ स्टेटमेंट टू दिस ऑगस्ट हाउस ऑन द गवर्नमेंट्स एफर्ट्स टू प्रमोट आर फॉरेन पॉलिसी सिंस द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट इन डूइंग सो आई फोकस ऑन हाई लेवल विजिट्स दैट हैव टेकन प्लेस रिसेंटली इन ऑर्डर दैट द फुल सिग्निफिकेंस इज प्रॉपरली अप्रिशिएटेड अलाउ मी मिस्टर चेयरमैन सर टू ब्रीफली शेयर विद द हाउस द लार्जर कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन विच दे हैव बीन ऑर्गेनाइज this government has a comprehensive foreign policy outlook that reflects both the state of the world and india's growing role in it we see a multipolar landscape that has been unfolding over the last decade although its its pace has been hastened in recent years our own growing capability and influence is of course one part of this change this requires us to strengthen multilateralism even while engaging in more intensive bilateral interactions it also means looking beyond orthodox diplomacy and arriving at issue based understandings with different combinations of nations to shape the global agenda more effectively india has to engage countries large and small across all regions it is only a matter it is not only a matter of advancing our own national interest the expectations that the world has of us is also very much higher in our own region this is visible in the neighborhood first approach as well as the sagar, sagar doctrine we have pursued the act east policy vigorously while building an effective bridge to the gulf in the west our indo pacific outlook has steadily gained understanding our commitments to africa and other nations of the south are well under implementation regional summits speak for the growing salience of india in the perception of the world the cumulative impact of all this is therefore a combination of greater diplomatic activity more intensive development partnerships stronger security engagements and growing global profile sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas is the guiding principle of our foreign policy as well that is visible mr chairman in the high level visits since the last session honorable rashtrapati ji has paid state visits to iceland switzerland and slovenia in september and the philippines and japan in october the honorable vice president has visited lithuania latvia and estonia in august as also to comoros and sierra leone in october the vice president also headed the delegation for the 18 non aligned summit that went to azerbaijan in october prime minister visited bhutan and then france united arab emirates and bahrain in august russia and the united states in september on a trip that included a visit to the united nations saudi arabia in october and thailand for the east asia summit and brazil for the brics summit in november raksha mantri represented india at the heads of government summit at the shanghai cooperation organization in november their diplomatic initiatives have been supported by my own visits and that of the minister of state to various other countries in asia africa europe and the americas through these endeavors we have sought to cover a variety of regions and a broad range of partners they have helped to shape the global agenda bringing india's interests and perspectives to the table they have advanced our national interests by strengthening bilateral partnerships and create favorable plurilateral and multilateral outcomes these range from big ideas on climate change to policy measures on counter terrorism and anti corruption as well as practical steps on trade Point investment and labor opportunities besides ensuring the welfare of the diaspora and together they have helped raise the image of india and the world visits by honorable rashtrapati ji and honorable vice president have enabled us cement our bilateral partnerships rashtrapati ji's visit to slovenia was the first ever presidential visit from india to that country during his various visits rashtrapati ji had a chance to interact with the vibrant indian community in those places gave lectures at universities unveiled the bust of mahatma gandhi in switzerland in vilnius a city that that which mahatma gandhi had visited in 1931 and signed important mous such as those on bike shipping a uh, tourism with philippines and on science and technology with slovenia <laughs> rashtrapati ji also addressed business forums in iceland slovenia switzerland and the philippines his visit to japan for the enthronement of the emperor underscored the importance that we attach to this important partner all six countries visited by the honorable vice president during this period marked the first high level visit from india to those countries honorable vice president's visit 
have enabled us to further our economic relations with the Baltic states and highlighted our cultural and linguistic ties with those countries. His visit to Comoros and Sierra Leone were widely appreciated for the reiterated our commitment to friendship with African countries. The visits also resulted in tangible outcomes, including cooperation in the field of defense with Comoros and the MOU for US dollar 30 million line of credit with Sierra Leone. Honorable Vice President's visit to Azerbaijan for the NAM summit highlighted India's continuing commitment to the NAM. It has added significance as it came just before the 65th anniversary of the Bandung Principles in 2020 and the 60th anniversary of the establishment of NAM in 2021. During the visit, Honorable Vice President also had bilateral meetings with the presidents of Afghanistan, Cuba, Venezuela, and Iran, the Vice President of Vietnam, and the Prime Ministers of Bangladesh and Nepal. Since the last session of the House, Prime Minister paid a state visit to Bhutan from 17 to 18 August 2019. This visit, early in his second term, underscores the government's continuing commitment to our neighborhood first policy. India's unique and special friendship with Bhutan is evident from the fact that the Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lothe Shering, received our Prime Minister at the airport and accompanied him throughout the visit. Prime Minister had warm interaction with His Majesty Jigme Kesar Namgyal Wangchuk, the King of Bhutan, as well as with His Majesty Jigme Singhe Wangchuk, the fourth king. In his talks with the Prime Minister of Bhutan, the latter conveyed Bhutan's appreciation for India's continuing assistance to Bhutan's socio-economic development, including in the hydropower sector. The two Prime Ministers also jointly inaugurated the 720-megawatt Mangdechu hydropower project and the ground earth station for the South Asia satellite and launched the Rupe card. They agree on, agreed on the establishment of a super-speciality hospital in Thimpu. The visit was also an opportunity for both countries to re-emphasize the common and indivisible nature of our security interest. The Prime Minister was invited by the President of France to participate in the G7 summit outreach session held in Biarritz, France, on 25-26 August. The invitation is an acknowledgement of the importance that G7 countries attach to India's leadership on matters related to climate, biodiversity and oceans, and on digital transformation. Prime Minister's call for a mass movement against single-use plastic was welcomed by other leaders. At the digital transformation session, where Prime Minister was invited to be the lead speaker, he highlighted the initiatives taken by his government for the empowerment and inclusive social development. We will continue to work with G7 countries on such issues and also on the reform of the multilateral system in order to make it more representative of current realities. Prime Minister held meetings on the sidelines with President Donald Trump of the United States, Prime Minister Boris Johnson of the UK, President Macky Saul of Senegal, and the UN Secretary General. He separately paid a bilateral visit to France and held wide-ranging talks with President Macron on ways to further deepen our strategic partnership with France, including inter alia, in the areas of defense and security, energy, including civil nuclear cooperation, space, counterterrorism, trade and investment. In pursuance of the government's determination to build even closer ties with the Gulf states, Prime Minister visited Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates between August 22-24 and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on 29th October 2019. Prime Minister's visit to Bahrain is the first ever by any Prime Minister and was welcomed by the King and other leaders as a signal of our commitment to strengthen all-round relations. With the leaderships of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, with whom we have witnessed a qualitative transformation of our ties since 2014, Prime Minister's visit afforded another occasion to advance our shared interests in the areas of energy, trade, investment and security, as well as to take up matters of interest to our large diasporas in this region. Rupe card was launched in Bahrain and UAE. The King of Bahrain and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi conferred their nation's highest awards on Prime Minister as a gesture of close friendship and affinity. We have also established a strategic partnership council with Saudi Arabia that will oversee trade and investment, energy, as well as security-related cooperation, which is expected to further strengthen our strategic relations. Prime Minister delivered a keynote address to the Future Investment Initiative Forum on India's economic prospects and investment opportunities. Prime Minister's visit to Russia from 4-5 September 
for both the annual summit with President Putin and to participate as a guest of honor at the fifth Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok was also a new milestone in our bilateral relations. Prior to Prime Minister's visit, a high-level delegation led by Commerce and Industry Minister, accompanied by Chief Ministers of four states and over 100 business persons, had visited Vladivostok to scope out possibilities for cooperation in the Russian Far East in sectors like energy, mining, and agriculture. The energy agenda that envisaged a five-year program of cooperation was also prepared in advance by a visit of the Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas. To support Indian companies to do business in the Russian Far East, Prime Minister has announced a special line of credit of US dollar one billion, especially for this part of Russia. The annual summit with President Putin was utilized to review and progress our multifarious activities and cooperation in defense and security, space, the Gaganyan program, civil nuclear cooperation, trade and investment, and people-to-people -people contacts. President Putin highly appreciated Prime Minister's participation in the EEF in Vladivostok as a mark of India's firm commitment to the special and privileged strategic partnership with the Russian Federation. Prime Minister's presence at the high-level segment of the 74th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York from 22 to 27 September underscored our government's firm commitment to multilateralism during a period of global uncertainty. Prime Minister called for making the UN more effective and purposeful through fundamental reform. Prime Minister participated in three important events, the Climate Action Summit, at which he announced the launch of our new initiative, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, and also reiterated our decision to end the use of single-use plastic. The high-level meeting on universal health coverage, where he highlighted the Ayushman Bharat initiative taken by the government, and joined in the commitment of all governments to a vision of universal health coverage by 2030, and the leaders' dialogue on strategic responses to terrorism and violent extremist narratives, where he spoke on the urgent collective need for all nations to join hands in combating the scourge of terrorism. Prime Minister's participation was welcomed by the general membership of the UN as a clear iteration of India's support to the UNO as it enters its 75th year. In his address to the general debate of the UNGA, Prime Minister focused on the development agenda. He highlighted India's initiatives such as Swachh Bharat, Jandhan Yojana, etc., as an inspiration to the world. Prime Minister said that, the, that India's development provides hope to the world and offered to share our experience and expertise to other developing countries in addressing the development challenges. He emphasized Mahatma Gandhi's message of truth and non-violence for peace and development and prosperity, and Swami Vivekananda's message of harmony and peace on a model for multilateralism. A highlight of Prime Minister's engagements in New York included, for the very first time, a leaders' meeting with the Pacific Small Islands, developing states, and a leaders' meeting with the Caribbean community, CARICOM. This outreach was greatly appreciated by all the leaders of these two regions. Prime Minister's offer of financial assistance for high-impact community development projects and concessional lines of credit was welcomed. Prime Minister also had bilateral meetings with 16 other heads of government and state, including the US President, uh, Iran's President Rouhani, President Soli of the Maldives, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, and the incoming president of the European Council, Mr. Charles Michel of Belgium, mm -hmm. on the sidelines of the UNGA. To mark the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi's, <coughs> Prime Minister presided over a special commemorative event on 21 September in the presence of UN Secretary General, the Prime Ministers of Bangladesh, Jamaica, Singapore, and the President of South Korea. A commemorative stamp was issued by the UN to mark the 150th anniversary. Prime Minister also dedicated the solar panels installed on the roof of the UN building with an Indian grant of US dollar one million in memory of Gandhiji. Prime Minister visited Thailand on November two to four to participate in the annual India ASEAN and India East Asia summits and related meetings. He emphasized the centrality of ASEAN in our active policy and our initiatives to enhance this partnership, including our offer of PhD fellowship programs of up to thousand Asian students at our IITs. This is the largest single capacity building project by India for ASEAN. The ASEAN leaders were deeply appreciative of our vision of the Indo-Pacific. At the East Asia Summit, we proposed an Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative as an open, free, and inclusive platform for cooperation. 
At the third RCEP summit, Prime Minister conveyed that India had participated in the RCEP negotiations with sincerity and in a spirit of cooperation, but was unable to associate itself with the RCEP agreement, since the agreement in its present form does not satisfactorily address all our outstanding issues and concerns. The government remains firmly committed to upholding our interests in all such negotiations. Prime Minister has just returned from the 11th BRICS summit in Brasilia from 13 to 14 November, where he also had bilateral meetings with the presidents of Brazil, China, and Russia. The summit focused inter alia on national sovereignty, intra BRICS cooperation for economic development, terrorism, multilateralism, digital transformation, and science, technology, and innovation. There are important deliverables in many of these areas. Five work, sub working groups on terrorism have been set up to focus on practical cooperation. Prime Minister made announcements of several BRICS initiatives which India proposes to pursue in the coming years, including the hosting of the BRICS Digital Health Summit in keeping with our Fit India movement, the hosting of the first BRICS Water Ministers meeting, a BRICS Film Technology Symposium, as well as a BRICS Youth Summit. During the visit, Prime Minister had a productive meeting with President Bolsonaro of Brazil. Prime Minister has invited the President of Brazil to India as the chief guest for Republic Day, and he has accepted the invitation. As is customary, our leaders met with Indian communities in many of the nations that they have visited. Rashtrapati ji had such interactions in all the five countries he visited, and Vice President during his visits to Europe and Africa. Prime Minister addressed the Indian diaspora in Bahrain, Houston, and Bangkok, respectively. The Houston event was notable for the presence and participation of President Donald Trump. In the past three months, Prime Minister also received several world leaders in India, reflecting the excellent state of our bilateral relations with Bangladesh. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina paid an official visit on October 5. Several important agreements were concluded during this visit, including on the use of Chhatogram and Mongla ports. This will greatly enhance connectivity to our Northeast. An agreement for the supply of drinking water in Sabrum town in Tripura from the waters of the Feni River was another notable outcome. Prime Minister and President Xi Jinping continued their in-depth discussion on overarching long-term and strategic issues of global and regional importance at the second informal summit in Chennai on 11-12 October. The fifth biennial intergovernmental consultations were held with Chancellor Merkel of Germany on 1 November, at which the two sides agreed to step up cooperation in new and advanced technology, artificial intelligence, skills development, railways modernization, and cybersecurity. In sum, Mr. Chairman, in the first six months of this government's tenure, we have re-emphasized our neighborhood-first policy, reinforced our relationship with all the major countries at the highest levels, worked to expand our relations with the Gulf, Southeast Asia, and African regions, launched a new international initiative known as the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, and also expressed a strong interest in fulfilling our commitments to the Sustainable Development Goals and in reforming the multilateral system so as to make it responsive to the current requirements. In pursuing these objectives, our government has always maintained its independence in the conduct of our foreign policy and ensured that the national interest determines our objectives and goals. Thank you. Thank you.